let's see the demo of Qframe on backend. For Qframe installation details, you can visit our Qframe official website. And for the license, you can visit our license server and the links are given here. Today, we are going to do the demo for Linode Cloud Provider. And for this, we need to install Qframe Linode Operator. And this is the Linode installer. You can visit our official website for the installation details, but the summary is here. We can use Helm install command to install the Q from Linode controller. So you do Helm install Q from provider Linode and then gets it from our Helm chart repo. And this is the latest version. Then we deploy it in Q from namespace. And finally, we need to provide the Q from license file. And once it is installed, we can check by this command whether the installation has been done successfully or not. So now I'm going to share my terminals for the demo. These are my terminals. Those I am I will use for this demo. In the left of terminal, I am currently basically in this manifest directory where all of this manifest that today we are going to use are stored and I'm going to apply them from this terminal. And in the right above, I'm currently watching the key from instance. Currently, there is no key from instance. So it is showing that not found. And right below, I will do SSH to my created those uh, linear instance. So these are my terminals. So before starting the demo, I would like to mention that there are can be three types of cases currently that QFORM support for any QFORM resources. One is user will only use local backend from the beginning to the end of the resource. That means from the creation to the delete operation. And another one is user will use only the remote backend again from the creation to the deletion. And the third one is user will initially use the local backend and then in the middle will switch to the remote backend. So today I'm going to show the third case as it covers the first two cases behaviors also. So basically if I, first I'm going to create a resource with only using the local backend and update it and then we'll switch to remote backend and also do the update operation. So let's start. I'm using kind version 11.1 .1 and Kubernetes version 21.1. Let's clean it. So, uh, and also I'm going to use the demo namespace for this demo purpose. And these are the cloud provider dashboards. This one is Linode cloud provider dashboard. And you can see there is no Linode instance named gift form. And this is the AWS S3 bucket list. You can see a bucket name gift form remote backend, which we are going to use as a, our remote backend bucket. And if we see inside this bucket, currently there is no objects. So it is empty currently. And this is the Linode instance resource YML, which basically uh, telling that the resource under the inspected resource, the configuration of the resource is given in the provider ref, the Linode credential is given here a Linode credential secret is referenced under the spec dot provider ref. You can see this is the Linode credential secret. And in the secret ref, the Linode sensor secret secret is referenced where we basically give gave the root pass, which is sensitive field. And termination policy is delete, update policy is do not destroy. And in the backend ref, we are referencing another Kubernetes secret that is named backend secret, which is basically our remote backend bucket configuration. In this specific case, we are going to use S3 remote bucket for our remote backend. So bucket name is Qform remote backend and the key is Qform slash terraform.tst. And you can see in the cloud dashboard, the same bucket, the key remote backend that we are going to use. So these are the secrets and this is the Linux instance configuration YML. So I have already applied the secrets and also installed the key from 
neural provider operator. So if I see codes, you can see key from provider Linode uh, operator is installed and the status is running. And if we see the secrets in the demo namespace, you can see the backend secret, Linode credentials, and also Linode sensor secrets. All are applied before, and they are currently in my machine, and they are running. Let's clear the screen. So I'm going to apply this uh, Linode instance YML. As I have said earlier, initially, I'm going to use the local backend. So that's why I'm going to comment out this backend field because I'm not gonna use remote backend initially. In the middle, we will switch from local backend to remote backend. So let's apply it in the demo space. Yeah, it is created and the reconciliation has started. You can see the phase of Q from instance is in progress. Let's see the cloud provider dashboard. I can refresh it. Uh, uh, Linode instance, which level is key from demo, is currently in provisioning state. Let's wait a bit to get into running state. You can see the Linode instance YML would have given the level is key from demo. It is booting. Uh, it is taking a bit time. Let's wait a bit. Yeah, it became running. So it came into the running state. So the phase also have come to the current. That means the creation has been done successfully. So using a local backend, we have created the resource. So as we used local backend, so the expected behavior is the state of the resource will be stored under the local queue from instance YML in the spec dot state field. So let's get the spec dot state field of our instance and the name is key from instance. Yes. Dot spec dot state. And the name species is them. The name. So we do it in JQ like something just some but should be it. Okay. Expense. Okay. Yeah. You can see the spec dot state of our key from instance and the level is demo. So the all the configuration that is the state of our key from instance resource is stored in locally in the key from resource under the spec dot state of the key from instance local YML. So it it did exactly according to our expectation. Let's clear the screen. We can again see in the cloud provider remote backend bucket name key from remote backend. And there is no objects, it is empty. And the key from 
load instance level keyframe demo is running so now we have seen the creation operation now let's update the resource so to do the update operation we will change the level from keyframe demo to keyframe demo update and then again apply it so the reconciliation has started it is in progress we can do the ssh of this created resource we need to provide the root pass that we have provided here it is to do the ssh yes yeah. yeah we have successfully did ssh into our created linode instance and the update operation has been also done successfully you can see the phase has come to the current and here if we refresh the linode provider dashboard you can see the level of the linode instance has been updated from q from demo to q from demo update and it is the exactly same resource because we didn't came out from the ssh so the update also has been done successfully and now we are going to switch from local backend to remote backend so for this let's remove the comment and use the backend ref and let's apply it again so after applying this the expected behavior is the spec is the state field of the uh, uh, local key from this uh, instance yml will be gone and it will be stored in the remote backend so let's see whether it do the exact thing or not let's apply it so we have applied it is configured the phase is in progress that means reconciliation has started again and we didn't change anything only just we change the backend ref and we switch from local backend to remote backend so it has come to the current phase and resource is also currently in the ssh so it didn't came out so the exact resource we are using it proved so the reconciliation has been done so let's see whether there is any spec dot state or not that we have seen in just before that there was uh, file uh, which is stored by our keyframe controller in the keyframe instance local yml under the spec.state and all the current all state of the resource has been saved there so now it won't be there it shouldn't be there because we have moved from local backend to remote backend so let's see you can see there is no spec.state so you can see also getting the instance so I will the name space is demo you can see in the spec there is no state so it proved it gone from the local so now another part is remain that is we need to check in the remote backend bucket in this case it is key from remote backend so let's enter into it so as we have given the key is here in this S3 backend secret, the key is key from slash terraform.txt. That means we have said under this key from remote backend bucket, it will create a folder named key from, and then inside that, the state will be stored in the terraform.txt file. So let's see. You can see a folder has been created, it wasn't there before, and inside that, there is a file terraform.txt. So if we open it, you can see the configuration. That means the state file. It is exactly equivalent to the Terraform TF state. So the TF state from local, it perfectly, it successfully switched from remote backend bucket. So if you see the level, you will see this key from demo update. It is key from demo update. Let's see. It is the key from demo update level. So the 
switch operation that means the moved operation has been done successfully the local state has moved to the remote backend so now we will see whether our qfm controller can read from that remote backend bucket and do the update operation if we do update again so now again let's change the level from give from demo to give demo update to give from demo and apply it the reconciliation is started still we are in that ssh so it is in progress phase let's refresh it yeah the level has been changed from q from demo update to q from demo you can see the phase it has come to the current so the update operation also has been done after switching to the remote backend so now let's see inside that remote backend bucket whether the configuration has been changed after this operation or not so the update after the update the level should be keep from demo rather keep from demo update what it was before yeah you can see the level has been changed and it has become keep from demo so our keep from controller successfully did the exact thing that we expected and in our third case that was initially we used local backend and then switch from local backend to remote backend and we see the update operation in both of the cases now let's see the delete operation let's delete the resource so the reconciliation is started and the resource is terminating we will came out from that this ssh after the delete operation has been done you can see in the linux provider dashboard the resource has gone and we have came out from that ssh it is still the phase is terminating it takes a bit time it will end within a very short time let's wait a bit and again another thing is when this termination has been done the expected behavior is the state file from the remote backend should be also deleted so let's see whether it is there or not you can see there is no objects that means that state file has gone as well as so the everything that we expected from our Kfm con provider controller, it showed exactly same things. So this was the our demo, hands on demo of Kfm remote backend. In our next video, we will see Kfm CLI in details and what can be done with Kfm CLI with appropriate example.